All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, this is episode 20, the function of the Great Pyramid Part 3. So one thing I want to mention before we get started with today's episode, the Egyptian pyramids are encyclopedias built into stone, and it is the intention of these structures to encapsulate all of the knowledge of this ancient civilization and preserve it so that one day future generations could come along and study these structures and retrieve all of that vital information. And that is exactly the intention of this project. And for example, previous episodes like the pressure capabilities of the Red Pyramid is to study, measure, analyze, and test these structures to develop a better understanding in an attempt to reverse engineer them and determine exactly how they originally operated. So with that being said, in today's episode, we are going to review the chemical manufacturing process that has brought us up to the Great Pyramid. So we're going to start with the Step Pyramid, the Red Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, and then finish with the Great Pyramid. And we're going to review the chemical operations occurring inside of these structures with a comparison to our modern industrial process for the manufacture of these chemicals so that you can more effectively envision the chemical reactions that are occurring inside of these structures. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. So if you want to help support the channel, go to the website, pick up a copy of the book, grab a t-shirt. Either way, it really means a lot to me. So thank you all so much in advance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's kick off today's episode with a review of the chemical manufacturing process that was occurring inside of the Step Pyramid of Saqqara. And my theory is that this structure was designed to produce methane gas. And let's take a look here on the diagram on the left side of the screen, which is going to show the interior components of the Step Pyramid. So recall that the original configuration of this structure only had three components. You had your inlet shaft, leading in here from the north. You have your central rectangular primary digestion chamber here in the center of the structure, and you have your outlet shaft leading out of this pyramid to the south. So again, let's compare that to the modern apparatus for the production of methane gas, which is a biogas digester, and you will see those exact same components. You have here your inlet shaft, leading into your primary digestion chamber and the digested material is removed from the structure through your displacement shaft leading out to the south and again very similar components to what we see here in the step pyramid of Saqqara. So the chemical manufacturing process involves cattle manure, agricultural scrap material, and water and those three components are mixed together to create a slurry here in your mixing pit which is exactly what we see here in our modern apparatus for biogas digestion. That slurry of cattle manure, agricultural scrap material, and water is introduced into the primary reactor through the inlet shaft, which is what we have here leading into your primary digestion chamber, exactly what we see here in the modern apparatus for methane digestion. Now, the anaerobic bacteria in that cattle manure are going to begin the digestion process, digesting that agricultural scrap material and generating methane gas, which is going to rise out of the slurry collected here in a gas holder directly above your primary digestion chamber. Now, in the original configuration of the step pyramid, that is exactly what I propose is that the methane gas rose up out of your slurry, was collected here in the gas collector above the chamber, and then removed directly out of the top of the platform. So again, ladies and gentlemen, that is a quick review of the methane manufacturing process at the step pyramid of Saqqara and a comparison to our modern apparatus for doing that same chemical reaction. And keep in mind, these sort of digesters are still in use today. For example, in rural India, this type of apparatus is very, very popular for use or creation rather of methane gas for use in domestic purposes. So heating, lighting, boiling water, etc. The main use that I believe the methane gas would have been applied for during the ancient times would have been for metallurgy. Again, if you have a very high temperature flame, they certainly would have applied that for the production of metals. Now, moving right along to the Red Pyramid of Dashur. So, of course, you all know by this point, my theory is that the Red Pyramid was designed to produce an ammonia solution. 
Now, we are going to compare that reaction to the modern day process for ammonia production, which I mentioned in my previous video, which is a process called the Haber process. So let's review the manufacturing process inside of the red pyramid. So we're gonna take that methane gas, we're gonna introduce it into your primary reaction chamber, the methane will react with water to create hydrogen and carbon monoxide. Those two gases will flow through your connecting shaft into your secondary reactor, where oxygen and nitrogen are introduced from the air. All of those gases react together to yield hydrogen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide byproduct dissolves into the water in this secondary reformer. It is eliminated from the system and the hydrogen and nitrogen gases are moved into your final synthesis chamber where they are compressed, reacted together to create ammonia gas. And the ammonia gas, being highly soluble in water, will rapidly dissolve into the water in the chamber, producing an ammonia solution. And that ammonia solution is then extracted from the chamber for use for fertilizer. And that is exactly what we see here in the Haber process, our modern industrial process for manufacturing ammonia. So we see here that the methane and water are introduced into the primary chamber, which is exactly what I propose in the primary reaction chamber of the Red Pyramid. Those two gases, again, produce hydrogen and carbon dioxide. Those gases flow into your secondary reactor where they are combined with oxygen and nitrogen from the air. That reaction proceeds producing nitrogen, hydrogen, and carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide dissolves into water and is removed from the system for use in a future manufacturing process. And that is exactly what we see here in our modern day process. And they're utilizing that carbon dioxide for the manufacturing process that I'm gonna be discussing next in the sequence. So after we remove that carbon dioxide byproduct, your nitrogen and hydrogen gases are then moved into your final synthesis chamber where they are reacted. Again, we just spoke about this in the previous video at pressures of two to 300 bar, 450 degrees Celsius and with catalysts to create that reaction producing ammonia gas. However, in our modern reaction process, we are creating ammonia liquid by cooling down that ammonia gas. Ammonia liquid is very, very different from an ammonia solution. So I wanna make that very, very clear. I am proposing that the red pyramid of Dashur was producing an ammonia solution, not liquid ammonia. So in the red pyramid, instead of producing that liquid ammonia, the nitrogen and hydrogen gases are gonna to react to produce ammonia gas. Again, that ammonia gas is highly soluble in water. So it is going to dissolve into the water in the chamber producing an ammonia solution. So now we have our ammonia solution, which is a very, very useful fertilizer. However, having your fertilizer in an aqueous solution is not the most advantageous form of that chemical to easily store, transport, and apply this product to crops, you would look for a solid state chemical, which is exactly what we're gonna to get to here in the next step. This is just a diagram showing the final synthesis chamber in our modern process, the Haber process for the manufacture of ammonia. So you see that nitrogen and hydrogen gases are being moved into the final synthesis chamber. Those are reacting in high temperature pressure and over catalyst to produce that ammonia liquid. However, again, in this ancient process inside of the red pyramid, the exact same process is occurring. However, your product is an aqueous ammonia solution, not liquid ammonia. Now, moving directly into the bent pyramid of Dashur. So even in today's modern manufacturing process, located in prox close proximity to your ammonia facility, is a secondary facility for the production of a solid state chemical that combines the ammonia and carbon dioxide byproduct that was extracted from that secondary chamber. And that is exactly what we see here in the bent pyramid of Dashur. So the intention of this structure is to transform your aqueous ammonia solution into a solid state chemical, ammonium bicarbonate, which could be more easily stored, transported, and applied to crops. So long story short, the manufacturing process involves percolation, precipitation, and separation. So this is your primary reaction chamber. It is filled with the ammonia solution. Ammonia gas is percolated through that ammonia solution, which is going to create a precipitation reaction that creates ammonium bicarbonate. 
that slurry containing your dissolved ammonium bicarbonate, ammonia, and carbon dioxide is then moved into your separation chambers. Now, in the lower separation chamber, your more dense slurry containing that dissolved solid product of ammonium bicarbonate is going to settle here into your lower separation chamber, and the remainder is going to rise. The remainder of the solution containing that dissolved carbon dioxide is going to separate into the upper chamber, and the carbon dioxide gas is going to rise into the upper vault so that it can be recirculated to the primary reaction chamber in the subsequent production cycle. And this is just a quick diagram that demonstrates that percolation process. So envision that this chamber is your primary reaction chamber. So we're just going to fill it with an ammonia solution. The carbon dioxide is going to be introduced into the chamber, percolating up through that ammonia solution, which is generating the solid ammonium bicarbonate, which again will precipitate out and is separated out in the lower separation chambers of that structure. And here's just a little diagram demonstrating some of the capabilities and uses of ammonium bicarbonate. So, of course, we know that the high nitrogen content of that compound is going to be excellent for fertilizer, and we're still using that today. However, there are more applications for ammonium bicarbonate. A couple of interesting ones that I noted here, lubricating agents. Also in the food industry, so ammonium bicarbonate is a leavening agent used in baking breads. It's also used in mineral separation, which would have been a critical use for this ancient civilization and also for the use of pigments. We know very clearly that the ancient dynastic Egyptians and their predecessors were one of the first civilizations on the planet to create synthetic pigments. So an, an applicable use for the ammonium, ammonium bicarbonate that was being produced inside of the Bent Pyramid. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are back at the Great Pyramid of Giza. So we're producing methane gas inside of the Step Pyramid. That methane gas is moved into the Red Pyramid where it is transformed into an ammonia solution. That ammonia solution is transferred into the Bent Pyramid where it is converted into a solid state chemical utilized for fertilizer known as ammonium bicarbonate. So moving forward to the Pyramids of Giza, let's just quickly review the manufacturing process that I proposed in my previous episode, my 2021 research expedition recap covering the Great Pyramid of Giza. So the first step in the process is to activate your subterranean pump chamber and push water into your grand gallery and begin filling this chamber. Grand gallery, otherwise known as your contact process chamber. The second step in the process is to initiate the combustion inside of your sulfur furnace, which is going to produce sulfur dioxide gas. After that combustion has been initiated, the water level inside of the contact process chamber is then lowered. This mechanism is going to draw air through the air shafts into your sulfur furnace, facilitating that combustion and the production of sulfur dioxides. Now, those sulfur oxides are pulled through the antechamber when this water level is being lowered. Again, that water level lowering is the mechanism that draws air into the sulfur furnace and draws those sulfur dioxides through the antechamber into the contact process chamber. The next step in the process is to raise the water level again in the contact process chamber bringing your sulfur oxides into contact with the water, producing a dilute solution of sulfuric acid. And that sulfuric acid solution is then removed from the structure from your extraction chamber, otherwise known as the queen's chamber. So again, let's compare this proposed manufacturing process, to modern industrial process for the manufacture of sulfuric acid. But before we get to that, I just want to show a couple of quick pictures from inside of this contact process chamber and from inside of the sulfur furnace. And I vividly recall from my 2017 research expedition, my first trip and my first time inside of the Great Pyramid. As soon as I walked into this chamber, I felt like I was on the inside of an oven, that the inside of this grand gallery or contact process chamber had been baked at a very, very high temperature. And I felt the exact same way when I walked into the king's chamber. I felt like I was in on the inside of an oven. And I didn't understand why until I started to analyze the structures and develop the theory. And I eventually determined that the reactions occurring inside of these chambers were indeed extremely exothermic. This one on the right, of course, being a furnace for the production of sulfur dioxide. And this chamber here is going to be for the production of that 
sulfuric acid solution, which is, of course, an extremely exothermic reaction. So again, let's take a look at our modern process for the manufacture of sulfuric acid and compare this to the components that I previously described of the Great Pyramid. So here you have your sulfur furnace, otherwise known as your king's chamber. Your next component is going to be your antechamber. Now at this point, I'm not going to discuss the function of the antechamber, but I will mention that this is one of the most critical components inside of the Great Pyramid. Those sulfur dioxides or sulfur trioxide here in the modern process is pulled through the antechamber into the contact process chamber where those oxides are mixed with water to create sulfuric acid. So again, let's take a look at this modern process and compare it to the components that we see inside of the Great Pyramid. So again, here you have your sulfur furnace with air intakes leading into the structure. That is exactly what we see here in the king's chamber. You have a sulfur furnace and these air intakes deliver air into the furnace to facilitate that combustion process. The next thing is going to be your catalytic converter or your antechamber. And this is exactly what we see here in the function of the Great Pyramid, that those sulfur oxides are pulled through the antechamber into the contact process chamber. And that is exactly what we see here in the configuration of the Great Pyramid. Of course, that sulfuric acid solution being produced here in the contact process chamber and then extracted through the Queen's Chamber. So let's take a look at this animation that demonstrates the chemical reactions occurring inside of this structure. And again, instead of these technical names, let's just replace those with the conventional pharaonic names that are utilized for the chambers of the Great Pyramid. So instead of your sulfur furnace here, this is your king's chamber. And these are your air intakes delivering air into the furnace. This next one, instead of a catalytic converter, this is otherwise known as your antechamber. Again, when you're lowering the water inside of this contact process chamber, you're essentially pulling all of the air through these air shafts and pulling that sulfur dioxide through the antechamber into this contact process chamber. That is exactly what we see occurring here in this animation. Instead of your absorption tower, this would otherwise be known as your grand gallery where your sulfur oxides are coming into contact with water. They are forming that dilute solution of sulfuric acid, which is extracted from your queen's chamber. And that is exactly what we see here, ladies and gentlemen, in the configuration of the Great Pyramid. So again, we have methane from the Step Pyramid, ammonia from the Red Pyramid, ammonium bicarbonate from the Bent Pyramid, and then here in the Great Pyramid of Giza, we are producing sulfuric acid. All right, everyone, just another quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem book are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. This is an absolutely gorgeous first edition print copy of the book, and I am unbelievably proud of how this thing turned out. So if you want to help support the channel, go to the website, pick up a copy of the book, grab a t-shirt. Either way, it means more to me than words to describe. So thank you so much in advance. All right, everyone, that is it for today's episode. This was episode 20, The Function of the Great Pyramid, part three. I really hope you enjoyed this little recap. In the next episode, we're gonna be resuming my 2021 research expedition recap covering the Central Pyramid of Giza. After many, many years researching the Egyptian pyramids and three years on site, in person on the Giza Plateau, I've come to the conclusion that the Central Pyramid of Giza is by far the most important structure on the plateau, and I'm very, very excited to present some incredibly unusual details about the structure that we discovered during my most recent trip, and of course, an explanation of exactly how that structure operated. So again, thank you all so much to all of the new subscribers here on the YouTube channel. If you liked the video, please leave it a like. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe to The Land of Chem. If you have any feedback, leave it in the comments section. I think that's it for today's video, so I will see you next time. <laughs>